Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to do a re Please note that Orteza sent me these products for free and that any products that you purchase, I will receive a commission. But I also wanted to share that I have a 10% off discount code. It's valid until November 20th, 2018. And it is T-Quilts 2, all one word, T-Quilts and the number 2. Thank you so much. I actually received these markers free in the mail to do a trial on these. And I also want to do a project with them. So I'm going to actually do a two-part video series on this. You all know that I've been uh, on the market looking for great fabric markers. And so I like to first do a test to see how they're going to behave before I actually put them into a project. So I know what type of project that I can use those markers in. So Atega sent me these markers they're actually fabric markers and there are 24 in a pack and they list them as premium markers that have dual tips one is a fine tip and then the other is a chisel tip and then on the back it also has some instructions about how to use the markers and then fabric care for the marker so they say how to use the markers open marker with a gentle clockwise twist place any pad underneath the fabric to prevent bleed through and then let finish drawing dry for 12 to 24 hours store the markers tightly recapped in a horizontal position so that means they want the markers to be laying flat instead of standing upright in an actual cup fabric care for these markers they say for best results wash the fabric in cold water with a neutral detergent hang dry to keep colors looking new and bright suitable for working on jeans t-shirts tennis shoes backpack jackets sweatshirts and more so i am going to go ahead and open this packet i haven't even opened it yet i thought that i would save that to do it with you on camera so let me just get my scissors to snip the little tape dots that they have on here Another great thing that I like about the Ortega markers just coming out of the box is that they do have the actual number of the marker as well as a color. And I'm sure that this is not going to zoom in. And they got the information on both sides of the tip. So this is elephant gray. And then also on the back of the package, they also list those same colors. And I know you've got pretty good glare here because of the plastic, but I just wanted you to see that they got all the markers and their names. And I like that because when I did the other marker review, I had to actually write a number onto each marker. So now I already have the markers numbered and I'm just going to go ahead and make my grid. So what I, am I using to make my grid with today? I actually have a piece of... <laughs> so to make my grid today, I'm just going to use a piece of white muslin. And I am actually going to cut two pieces about 12 and a half inches square. And then I'm also going to cut two pieces of freezer paper. And when I'm using or cutting the freezer paper, I'm just going to use one of my rotary cutters that... I have designated for paper so you don't want to cut your freezer paper with your new rotary blade so I'm going to go do that step and then I'll come right back so I have my two pieces of fabric cut out and I have labeled one unwashed sheet and the other a wash sheet and so I just went ahead and did a few of these just to get started so I could be acclimated with the markers the markers the caps do come off with just a pull so it's nice and tight snap close when you're using one end of the marker you can put the cap on the other end of the marker and i am drawing 
some lines on both sheets with both markers. I'm using it where the chisel point is flat, which is not how you're supposed to use it, but I just want to see how the color will play when I wash it. And then also I am using it where the chisel, well, I'm just using the point of the chisel to draw a line. And then on the other end with the tip, I'm using it to write the marker number. This one is A162, which is lavender. And then I also draw a line with the point of this one. And I'm doing the exact same thing on both sheets. Oops, <laughs> forgot to draw my line with this one. And the reason why I'm drawing both lines with both sides, just to see if one holds up more than the other. I do find that the markers are, for the most part, they're very juicy, so they have a lot of ink in them. I think they have to get started where you got to get the ink down to the chisel point. Like sometimes I've got more ink on one than I've got on the other. But I think that's just because they're new markers at this point. But they are very juicy and have a lot of ink in them. So I am just going to continue doing this until I'm done so that I can get all of the markers on my sheet. And then I will come back. I have my grids completed. And I do want to note that I did draw my grids with the A104 marker. And on this one, you can kind of see a little bit of where it's smeared. So if you're drawing lines with this marker, please make sure to watch it when you're drawing lines that when you slide your ruler over that you're not going to smear your fabric. But that was like user error. I'm not putting that on the markers at all. I'm just giving you some tips for using fabric markers in general, per se. And... My next thing that I want to do is I'm actually going to do another project with this. So I just want to do a quick check. I want to do a wet blend as well as a dry blend. So I am going to use number 124 and number 169. 169 color is tangerine and 124's color is apricot. So all I want to do is just see how these markers blend when they're wet and then how they blend when they're dry. So I'm just gonna put down one color and then go in with some shading to see how it shades with another color. Okay, now for this next blend, I am going to let this marker dry a little bit before I come back and do a blend. So I'm going to put the light color down first. And then I'm going to let that dry. And I'll come back, and I probably won't show it on camera, but I'll come back and do this dry blend in about two hours maybe i'm going to let it sit for two hours and then i'm going to let this entire thing sit for over 12 hours for sure and then i will tell you it's about let's see 1 35 a.m <laughs> so i will try to come back like around 2 2 30 tomorrow and do the washing of this so that's it for this part i'll see you on the next segment I'm back with my completed projects. It's actually later in the day. I started this about, I finished my grid about 1.35 a.m. And now it is 2.17 p.m. So I have waited over the 12 hours. I'm not going to do 24 hours. And I am going to go ahead and wash this in a sink with some 
uh, dish soap and we're going to let this air dry. So the first thing that I need to do with the one that I'm washing is that I need to remove the actual freezer paper that I had on the back. So let's go and wash this out. So I'm at my sink and I am just going to do a quick hand washing. But I wanted to show you this section here where the chisel marker has completely changed the texture and feel of this fabric. I don't know what happened with that ink, but again, it was when it was first, first time being used. This is how it looks, that same color when I use the point end. So you can see that the point end and where I did the text is totally different than that text. But we're just gonna proceed on. I'm just going to put some cool water into my sink. And we don't need much water. A little bit of soap. Suds it up. And then I'm just going to put my piece in. I did not heat set. The instructions didn't say to heat set, so I did not do that. I so there's no color in the water whatsoever. That's really good. And so now I'm just going to let this water out. Put my piece back in. Make sure all the sudsing is out. This water I made a little lukewarm. It was a little warmer than the other water. Just to see if it would run. And it did not. Water is still clear. So I will now let that out. So, right now it looks really good. Looks very good. So this is where I was playing with the shading. This is my wet shading over here. And then my dry shading on this side. So I'm just going to hang this over a, a bath towel so that it can dry. And then when it's dry, I'll press this out and we'll come back for a final review. Here are the completed results. I have the wash sheet here. I did go back and press it on my ironing surface. And then I also put it back onto freezer paper so that you wouldn't see any differences because of shadow. But I will just put the unwashed on top of the wash to overlap a little bit. And maybe zoom in. But I don't see a lot of difference in the color as far as being washed and unwashed. So, only thing that I see is this color here is a little different, but it was that one with the chisel point that I pointed out before. That, for some reason, the first ink that came out of it was not smooth, but it's working well elsewhere. And even down here where I did blending, I did a wet blend over here, and it's kind of pale in the center. So, I would recommend if you're trying to blend to make sure that you dry the markers in between your initial put down to make sure that they're dry and it looks like it blended a lot better in the middle there. So I don't know if the camera can even pick that up. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. But you can see more shading in this area whereas over here it just looks pretty flat. So that's it for my review of the durability of the markers. I do think that they will work very well. I'm excited about finding something where the color did not change when it was actually washed. 
most things that I color will not be washed, but there are a few times where I may have something washed or if something is gifted and know that I don't have to worry about the markers when they're washed. So come back and watch my next video in the next day or so where I am going to do a Halloween project using these markers. So thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.